Hi, and welcome to Audiobook Basics for Authors Part 2. This one is all about finding a narrator and paying them. I'm going to talk first about how a narrator gets paid, and then in the next video about how to find one and agree payment with them. First of all, can we just agree that narrators deserve to get paid? They are professionals in this industry, like editors and cover artists. And just like editors and cover artists, they have different skill levels and they charge different rates for their expertise. Uh, there are narrators out there who have huge followings of devoted fans who will listen to anything they record, in whatever genre. Um, Sebastian York is probably the most famous, particularly in romance, but there are others. If you want a narrator at that level, or a celebrity narrator, be prepared to pay eye-watering amounts of money for the privilege. That out of the way. There are several different ways in which narrators get paid, and this is where some of those acronyms I mentioned before come in. I'm going to run through them all and explain what they mean and why some narrators work in one way and not in others. First of all, there is upfront payment, and there are two different types of this. First is per finished hour, PFH. A narrator will quote a rate, pretty much inevitably in US dollars, that's the only currency you'll really see used in audiobook productions, of what they charge per finished hour of audiobook narration. To estimate how many hours your book is going to be, divide your word count by 9,300. Um, this is the ACX average of words per hour in audiobooks. It might be a bit more, it might be a bit less, work on that. 50,000 word book, about 5 hours 20 minutes. Work on that and you shouldn't get any nasty surprises. Finished means that the audio files delivered to you are proofed, edited and mastered to meet ACX technical standards. And I promise I will go through what that means in another video. But frankly, it's your narrator who needs to understand it, not you. If they have done their job correctly, they will deliver MP3 files, which you will upload to wherever you are distributing. The files will pass quality check and you don't need to worry any more about it. What you do need to understand is that a finished hour of audio takes a hell of a lot more than one hour to make. The ratio is about five to one for most professionals. And that means it takes five hours of work to deliver one hour of finished audiobook. So anyone working for 50 bucks per finished hour is valuing their time at $10 an hour. If 50 bucks an hour is the rate you're prepared to pay, you're offering well under minimum wage, and most narrators are going to think you're an asshole. You might get someone for whom English isn't their first language. You're certainly not going to get any attention to detail in your quality and your editing and your mastering, and they might not even proof it. Straight talk. In my opinion, the absolute minimum you should consider offering as a PFH rate is $125. That works out around 25 bucks an hour, and that is not a terrible wage for a freelancer, especially someone in the early stages of building a career as a narrator. However, a lot of professional narrators belong to a union, the SAG-AFTRA, the Screen Actors Guild, Mumble, mumble, mumble. Look, I can't remember what the rest stands for, and it doesn't really matter. The point is that the union sets a minimum rate for voice acting and audiobook narration of $250 per hour. Not finished. That's per raw hour. The actors work only. Which brings me neatly to the second way narrators are sometimes paid up front. We've talked about pay per finished hour. Now let's talk about pay per raw hour. Many narrators, including myself, do offer this as an option. They will provide unedited files, and you then need to hire an audiobook engineer to edit and master them, and possibly also a proofer to check them, though you can potentially do this part yourself. Editing and mastering by a professional costs between 60 and 80 bucks per finished hour, and if you want the proofing done as well, that's another 20 bucks per finished hour. All figures I'm quoting are in US dollars, remember, because it's the standard currency. Now, this can save you money, 
I recently heard about a narrator who charges $495 per finished hour, but only $350 per raw hour. You can find a $60 an hour engineer and do your own proofing, and you could save 80 bucks or more an hour, and that's a lot on a 10 hour audiobook, for example. That said, I wouldn't recommend it unless you know quite a bit about audiobook production and you listen to enough audiobooks to be able to tell a good quality edit from a bad one. As a general rule, pay per finished hour. Which brings me back to the pay rate again. Any SAG after a member narrator is going to charge a minimum $250 plus engineering and proofing costs per hour. $325 per finished hour at least. This can be a lot of money, especially if your book is pushing 100,000 words and you're multiplying that price by 10 and a half and feeling a bit queasy. OK, I get it. There are narrators who charge less because they're non-union. I am one of them. You can look up my rates on my website. Link is below the video. Look around. Listen to audiobooks. Look up the narrators. Not everyone has a public rate card, but pretty much all of us will respond to an inquiry about our PFH rates. Don't forget to ask about availability too. That $495 an hour narrator I mentioned booked out six months in advance. He knows he's worth every penny. Some more straight talk here, and this one is with my author hat on rather than my narrator hat. If you can afford it, absolutely save up and pay PFH up front. It's the best deal for you, the author. I also recommend dealing direct with the narrator if at all possible. If you go through Findaway Voices to find a narrator, for example, they charge a 30% commission for the privilege. Youch! That's a that can be a lot of money if you're paying three grand or more for your narration. Ouch. If you can't afford PFH up front, that's where the other options come in. And we're back into acronym territory again as I talk about RS, RS plus and RD. RS stands for royalty share. Audiobook contracts are for seven years. This is set by ACX and the other distributors and it's not negotiable. And if you take an RS contract, your narrator gets half the royalties for the life of your contract. If you do an RS contract through ACX, it must be exclusive too. You cannot go wide. Here's the thing. Royalty share is a gamble for a narrator. We might never earn out meaning we might never get paid as much as we would for the work if we did it PFH. On the other hand, the author might suddenly become famous and the audiobook could start selling, making it one of our best earners. But it is a gamble. And for this reason, the narrator is absolutely within their rights to ask you, the author, to sell them on this partnership, because that's exactly what you're asking for. This is a joint business venture where you contribute the intellectual property and they put in their vocal skills and you then share the profits. A smart narrator is going to do their due diligence, looking at your book rank, your reviews, your other books, your customer base. They may ask you for sales figures if the book is already out or on your other books and your marketing plan for the audiobook. And if they don't like what they hear, they may well say no. In their considered judgment, you're a bad business risk. You don't get to take offence at this, sorry. If you cannot demonstrate a proven track record of sales and a readership eager for your books, you have absolutely no right to expect that the professional should be willing to take a risk on you. You'll find someone to do RS with you, I'm sure. There are stacks of terrible books on ACX up for audition with RS all the time, and people do take them on. But again, it comes back to, are you going to get the quality of narration you want? Now, a narrator might do their risk assessment and say no to RS, but offer RS plus or royalty share plus. This is where you still do royalty share. They still get half your royalties, 
but you also pay them a certain amount up front. For narrators who pay an audio engineer, this basically means they cover those costs, so they can be sure they won't be out of pocket for that, at least. Now you might be thinking, if I'm going to pay up front, shouldn't I just pay PFH and keep all the royalties? Well, yes. Yes, you should. I said that earlier. PFH is the best deal for you, the author. Right? But RS Plus rates are often a lot lower. 50 to $75 per hour is often the plus rate, which adds up to a lot less than $325 per hour, right? You might be able to afford it where you can't afford PFH. RS has been a no upfront cost way to get into audio for a while. But you need to accept that the established narrators are absolutely not doing these projects. Not even RS Plus ones. It's people who are looking to build a portfolio. And they are still not going to consider you if they don't think they can make money off you. Not now the code farming loophole has cut off a guaranteed payout. You need to sell an RS deal to a narrator. And you need to accept that if you're right about your earnings potential, you will actually make less money in the long run than you would have paying that same narrator a PFH deal. Which is why I say do PFH if you can. If a narrator thinks you're worth doing an RS deal with, chances are you're actually going to come off worse out of the deal financially. You might be able to look at crowdfunding or Patreon with options for backers to get a copy of the audiobook pre-release in order to raise the money up front. If you have a following, this is absolutely something which could work for you if you can't otherwise come up with the cash. Think about it. There's one more way to pay a narrator, and this one is really brand new and only available through Audiobooks Unleashed at the present time. It's RD, or Royalties Deferred. What this means is that you and the narrator agree at the outset how much the narrator is going to get paid, and then Audiobooks Unleashed pay all the royalties to the narrator until that amount has been paid out. Then you get the rest of it for the remainder of the contract term. Seven years, if you forgot. I believe you need to use Audiobooks Unleashed exclusively for your distribution if you're going to do this. I will be offering this as an option to selected new clients, but I'm going to be adding a 10% premium to my PFH rates for it because I may well have to wait a couple of years to get paid in full and I suspect most other narrators will do something similar. If we've got to wait for our money, we're going to want a bit more. Okay? This is a great option if you don't have the money to pay PFH and you either don't want to do RS because you think the narrator will get too much share of your royalties or you can't convince a narrator to do RS with you. There is no upfront cost to you as an author, and there is low risk to the narrator. There is incentive for both of you to put effort into promotion, so the narrator can get paid out sooner, and you can start getting paid. I think it's probably the best of both worlds. I'll still be asking the authors about sales figures and their marketing plan. I don't want to wait seven years to get paid. I want it within the first 12 months. And with any kind of following and marketing plan, that should absolutely happen. And then you, the author, get six years worth of royalties. I don't take on RS or RS Plus projects, but I am planning to do up to one RD book per month. If you're interested in this option with me, get in touch and we'll talk. Next video, I'm going to talk about where to find narrators, and what questions you need to ask a narrator you're considering working with. See you then.